Welcome back to Fast Market here on the TD Ameritrade Network. Let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment, and that's going to be Andy Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Andy. Hey, happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. So uh, it's been a, a rough period, rough earnings season here for so so far for some of the retailers here. Yeah. Target always seems to stand out, but we've seen some really volatile moves lately post earnings in this name. What kind of data do you guys have out of Likefolio? Yeah, last quarter, you know, Target really got crushed on earnings, um, restated expectations in a big way. And this is that first quarter following that. It's always paid attention to in a big way when a company does that. And I think it's really kind of a mixed bag, um, you know, overall for Target. And the reason I say that is Target's kind of in the middle, um, in, in that middle zone where we really don't like to see companies at this point in time. So you see luxury brands doing very well. You see the very heavy discount brands doing very well. And all of those in the middle seem to be losing out. And, you know, when I look at Walmart's uh, earnings report from last, I think it was last week, they had a pretty good report that, you know, everything beat. Um, it was kind of an inflation driven report because prices were just higher across the board. So their revenues and margin and, and profits were a little higher. But one thing that kind of stuck out to me, you know, is I, I think that the trade down effect really, really helped Walmart out. I think there, there's a lot of people that are trying to save money on their everyday purchases. Um, you know, higher income people were coming into Walmart uh, to get groceries, which I think does not bode well for, for Target's foot traffic. You know, so overall, we, we kind of have targeted in this kind of no man's land. It'll be very interesting to see what they say about the quarter coming up. I really don't think that they're going to be able to put out uh, extremely positive guidance. I think they're going to have to stay cautious. Uh, that's been the trend so far this year for most retailers, and we think Target will be no exception. You know, Andy, what saved Walmart the day of their earnings was some good news on just what you mentioned, inventories. And that really hamstrung uh, Target in quarters past. Remember, they had to take yeah. their uh, margins down to 1.6%, get through that discretionary inventory, then they, they thought they'd get them back up. I don't know if they've necessarily gotten them up yet. Now, Walmart had a nice day uh, the day of their earnings, but it's down five bucks since that day. Yeah. Now, that's part of that is the overall market, but Target's part of the overall market, too, and the, you're right. They're not the cheapest, and they're not the highest. Uh, this is a company that's doing a lot of investing, doing things like that, but is it enough, Andy? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I don't think it is um, for where we're at right now. On the digital side, we, th we see things really flat. You know, overall, we just really see things very flat for Target, and, uh, you know, of course, we don't have – a great insight into their costs or you know inventory controls and things like that at like folio the only thing we can speak to is consumer demand and the word you know for for target right now is flat or down and most importantly like the chart shows right now worse than walmart and worse than amazon uh, a lot of it is because uh, you know again that trade down effect is very real the bright side on this the trade down effect can help Target's profit margins because when people do go to Target, they're more likely to look at uh, the, you know, Target's private label brands, which Target has some of the best private label brands probably other than Costco's, Kirkland. Um, you know, people really like these. The consumer happiness levels with Target's private label brands is, is very high. So it doesn't feel like a trade down other than, than cost. So I think that's the one area where I expect we'll hear uh, positive things from the executive team is that that can really help uh, boost margins uh, for the company. But overall, it just looks really flat for Target. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that chart that we just had up there, Andy, to see Target and Costco, which were, you know, pandemic winners, and it seemed like they had turned the tables on, like, Walmart and Amazon yep. a lot over the last three years since pandem the pandemic started. To see those two at the bottom, is that a big shift in your data from, like, Folio uh, based on, uh, you know, what we've seen? Because it still seems like everybody wants to go to Costco. They're not yeah. giving up their memberships. And, you know, Target's still on the tip of everybody's tongue, but it seems like it's shifted. Yeah, I would put an asterisk almost next to the to the Costco line because a lot of that was gas price driven. You know, if you if you remember back um, over the last year or so, 
gas prices were an extreme concern last spring and summer. So people were talking a lot about going to Costco for gas. Um, you know, that may have skewed our data a little bit. So I think that's the asterisk there. But among the other three, Walmart, Amazon, Target, those are pretty clean numbers. No gas price dr driven stuff in there. And Target at the bottom is a shift. Uh, and it's a pretty big shift because this is a company that we're used to seeing lead the pack. And I think these macroeconomic headwinds have just put them a little bit in no man's land and, and not sure how to define themselves with a increasingly you know, cost conscious customer. Yeah, and discretionary goods at Target make up about 60% of their revenue. So that's yeah. going to be a concern moving forward here uh, because it seems like the grocery business is carrying Walmart uh, and maybe some of the others. But do you guys have a, a, an earnings score on uh, Target going into this report? Yeah, we're, we're officially neutral, but I would say after, um, you know, if you're looking directionally, if I had to bet, I would bet to the bear side. The stock's moved up uh, fairly considerably over the last little bit. And, um, you know, on the heels of what we saw from Home Depot, I think that's the more accurate comparison than the Walmart comparison, because I think Walmart's just, quite frankly, eating Target's lunch. All right, uh, so uh, pretty negative. This is pretty uh, astounding, the tur turnaround we've seen in the last probably three or four quarters from this company. Uh, but Andy, great uh, data as usual, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that's Andy Swan, co-founder of Likefolio, helping us break down Target. Uh, you know, the 